But wait, there's more. Holy moly. I just did one of these recently um, because there's so much stuff that happened right after I put out the full disclosure. And this one is certainly no exception. It is one of the most popular full disclosures to date. And I think indirectly sparked a couple of the things that we're seeing pop up. So let's just jump right into it. Let's start with, uh, I'm not going to bury the lead. The lead is uh, Gary Lamb against Exotic Youth. And then a number of people chiming in and all of that good stuff. It's it's really fun um, for those that don't know what's going on. So basically, I'm just going to go through um, the major things that Gary Lamb said and um, Exotic Youth responded with, particularly Zach Mosley, and um, and then my sort of take on it um, portrayed in the easiest way possible. Um, yeah, we also have two other store or two other things to cover as well. So let's just jump into this. So so Gary Lamb posts. Um, using part of uh, Charles' review in the IWE show uh, about how good that Exotic Youth Ugly Ducklings match was. And it and it was that fucking good. It was fucking great. Um, but Gary says, when Exotic Youth is the tag team standard in Georgia, something is wrong. Reality is they couldn't hold the jock strap of technical excellence, lynch mob, lethal poison, honor society, or all-star special. But none of these teams will stoop to take every shit booking they get offered. Um, to me, that's... Um... <laughs> um, it's on, right? Um, and Gary's post obviously begins... Round one, fight! Um, and away we go. So Gary got in his shot... Uh... <laughs> Zach responds, just would like to point out that the biggest drawing show you put on this year was the one Exotic Youth was on. Coincidence? I doubt it. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, nobody has done more, drawn more people, had more fantastic matches, and even took a promotion you call shit from drawing 75 to outdrawing you in a matter of months. Ouch. Uh, so again, by the numbers and by crowd reaction and by ability and by the weight of gold, we win. Go suck your thumb and cry about it. That's pretty great. Uh, book us again if you want to get back over 400. Fuck me. Uh, pretty brutal. Gary Lamb's response. Zach Mosley, you got spunk. But call me when one of the real shows books you instead of shit shows. Uh, crowd or no crowd, a shit show is a shit show, but you keep hustling, kid. Um, fucking round one is to Zach Mosley. I mean, come on. Uh, Z Gary responding with fucking, you know, you got spunk. Already shows that it's like he's acknowledging him and then, you know, call you in real shows, book you instead of shit shows. <laughs> crowd or no crowd, a shit show is a shit show, but you keep hustling, kid. All right. Uh, round one, I, uh, clearly give to, um. Zach Mosley. So that brings us to round two. Fight. Zach Mosley. Uh, Gary Lamb. Half of your roster was at IWE on Saturday. Actually, true. Right? Danny Jordan, um, David Ali, bunch of other folks. Uh, Half of your roster was at IWE on Saturday, too, bud. We got match of the night from damn near everyone in the building. It's true. Uh, you're talking out of your ass. That's true. <laughs> also, remember when we worked your show. And like I said, biggest show you had this year was the one we were on. Sh sounds to me like you're calling your own show shitty. Yes, Gary Lamb saying, call me when a non-shit show books you when they just book them. Eh pretty bad no disrespect to any of the teams you mentioned all great teams but i guarantee you whether they admit it or not many of them he doesn't say all of them which i think is smart because all-star special is clearly getting booked all over the place including a lot of shows that gary would probably categorize as a shit show by the way um whether they, they admit it or not many of them would love to be booked up like we are i think that's absolutely true um absolutely true the fact is no matter where we are we make it the place to be uh, nice close there. Uh, Gary Lamb responds with something short, sweet, 
but pretty brutal, I gotta say. Zach Mosley, you were brought in for one reason, to be jobbers. Never forget your role as my jobber. That was a bit of a power move. It's certainly better than his dismissive, like, you got spunk kid bullshit. So I'm gonna actually charitably, I'll grant you, give Gary Lamb round two. But I'm really only doing that because what I want is a... Final round. Fight! Sure, 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 sure. Um... Uh, yeah, they kind of go back and forth. Um, some of the stuff is pretty, pretty lame, actually. But then Zach Mosley hits Gary Lamb for our final round with, Gary Lamb, you're a perfect example of someone who gets jealous as fuck anytime someone succeeds you don't have a hand in. Boy, that's one of those cuts that's, when you think about the statement, it's actually very insightful and mostly true. It's funny how someone so successful can be so damn childish. That's true. We are the best, Gary. Everyone is saying it, so get over it. You're only trying to convince yourself. Everyone else already knows you've lost your damn mind. And Gary, have a nice day, buddy. Have a good day, buddy. I mean, it's pretty obvious what to call that. Finish him! Flawless victory. Fatality. Yeah, that last round. And then Gary um, was telling people privately, like, oh, I'm done with it. I'm full. I'm blah, blah, blah. But then just kept commenting and posting about it and kept responding and then sharing posts that people would say praising Gary Lamb. To me, that just looks... You are still trying to win. <laughs> um, I know a number of people have chimed in and sort of try to dismiss Exotic Youth, uh, but to me, um, it's pretty obvious that Gary sort of stringing this thing out and then talking out of two sides of his neck on one hand saying like, oh, I just, I just like starting shit. Um, and it doesn't matter to me, but then endlessly continuing to post about it when it's clear that they got under his skin. To me, that was pathetic. Um, as for the exotic youth, there's no doubt about it. Impressive. And finally, I mean, the stunt that they did with, uh, uh, I mean, printing up, you know, printing up the flyers and then going over there and then cutting another promo. I mean, what can you say? <laughs> <sighs> cool. Well, uh, uh, a story that's minor and you know, uh, nothing's been proven yet, but uh, you know, boot and heel guy, David Rolano, um, his latest arrest for domestic, uh, let me make sure I'm getting it right. Um, what is it here? Domestic assault. Um, and then this, uh, this coming out also uncovered a number of arrests that have happened for this before as far back as 2008, but again in 2018, um, and which was also, I think, a violation of a restraining order. Um, it doesn't look good. I've been told, though, the 2018 one was like an ex-wife situation, possible false accusation. So I'm going to put that out there um, because I found that out as well. But now you're looking at three times, right? Three times for this domestic stuff. And then this latest one, was it with the girl that he like dragged through the mud and how evil she was and all this other shit and then got what? Got back together with her and now there's this domestic abuse shit. Fucking Jesus. All I know is everything I heard about boot and heel um, when I was on my trip. I didn't put this out there before, but now it seems like an appropriate time. Everything I'd heard about boot and heel was that people didn't get their money. Um, that was promised that it ended up being a uh, pretty much a crappy deal for anybody who got freaking, you know, was, he was going to move product for, and that didn't happen. And, um, a bunch of people got paid l really late on stuff and only if they were really persistent. And, uh, I mean, I mean, by all measure that show 
that they did in Tampa for WrestleMania week was an unequivocal disaster. If it's true that he put in 15 grand like he was bragging about into that show that virtually nobody came to. I mean, they had more people watching at the 10 in the morning than they did 7 at night. Um, but that's because they had real competition and... Um, everything about boot and heel. I mean, I've been saving up to save it because David Rolano vague posts about me often and he has in the past. Well, let me just say fuck David Rolano and uh, fuck boot and heel. And it's just a bunch of hairy horse shit. And if you talk to anybody that used to be with them, that's not with them anymore. Um, it's pretty clear boot and heel as a business model doesn't make a lot of sense. I think anybody would agree with that. And the only people who would disagree with that are hoping that Boot and Heel somehow gets them some money. But all I can say about that is don't hold your damn breath. Mm. Now, um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a bunch of wrestling memes. People send me these things all the time. I find them all the time. I've, um, slowly gone through the process of just sort of compiling them and we're just going to take a look at them one by one cool uh we'll start with uh hulk hogan prepping to fight cody to try to bring racism back <laughs> uh cody rhodes got dragged pretty hard because of his promo uh especially by black twitter and wrestling twitter um but this one i thought was a, a hilarious sort of take on that whole thing was the Hulk Hogan one is pretty ridiculous. This one. Uh, when you order John Moxley off wish. Brutal, brutal, brutal. That's one that MJF shared at length as well. Pretty accurate too. Um, this one. Uh, Big Papa Crunch, bro. 141 and two-thirds chance of being a balanced breakfast. Oh, Big Papa Pomp. I love it. And a lot of these you can see are marked by a kayfabe connection. Uh, they're certainly, they certainly put out the good stuff. Um, next one. This one made me laugh personally as an older gent who remembers these wrestling games and absolutely adored every one of them. From No Mercy to all the ones that kind of had the same engine as No Mercy. Any of the WCW games, etc. Uh, me in 1999. These graphics can't get any more realistic. The graphics. And there it is. Um, I, it's a weird little addendum to this. I even said that the first time we saw an Intellivision versus Atari. I remember thinking at the time, this is amazing. Or a ColecoVision. It's like, it looks just like the Donkey Kong game in the arcade. It's never going to get any better. Boy, was I wrong. Uh, next one. <laughs> I remember the kid from Deadpool 2. He just won the NXT North American title. It was one of those where when, uh, when he won, when Bronson Reed won it, and I'm taking a good hard look at him, and I'm like, it's bugging me. Who does he look like? Who does he look like? And this is one of those memes that came out of nowhere. And then I went, oh, yeah, there it is. There it is. Next one. Um, this is one of my favorites. What we saw. <laughs> what big he saw. Because his chest is so big. He's covering up the icy tunnel with them titties. I fucking love Big E. I love New Day. Um, and this meme made me laugh fucking hard. Next one. Um, new bag of ice and me. Have you ever choke slammed a bag of ice? Only if you're a motherfucking man, have you? Uh, next one. When you're underneath Cornette's wife wondering if the PS5 is worth it. Oh, my God. Um, you know, the one thing that came out of Corn them trying to stupidly sweep Cornette up in all the speaking out shit. Obviously, that part didn't stick to him because I don't believe for a second that was true. I don't think there was like sexual favors given out in order to get a push or ring time or some nonsense like that. But nonetheless, all the uh, all the cuckery has come out. And um, that's a label that Cornette will never be able to shed, whatever it is worth. And then this one, only I'm going to find this funny most likely. But anybody who um, was around me for the PCW training thing will definitely get a big chuckle out of this. So, of course, it's the famous meme with these cats, um, with these things put in. Uh, Ibsen is the father of modern drama. I've made Ibsen references before in training, guys. Um, 
Chekhov was superior at character development. Chekhov couldn't write a gripping plot line to save his life because he was more interested in the fatalism of the human condition. Ibsen's concern with plot and realism showed how we are all products of economics and societal pressures far better than Chekhov's heavy use of allegory. Holy fucking shit. As a fucking, you know, English major, master's in the thing, pursued a PhD in the stuff. I, I mean, this shit just cracked me up. Um... Uh, I always point out the thing about Chekhov's gun, and I think it's especially relevant when it comes to pro wrestling. Chekhov's gun um, says that if you bring a pistol out on the stage, you have to use it or the audience feels disappointed, amongst other things. And so it goes in pro wrestling. If you tease a table, we damn near better see the table used. If you bring a chair in the ring, in some way that chair has to factor into the finish, etc., etc., etc. Theatrical things that definitely apply to pro wrestling. Um, and uh, here's the next one. Uh, <laughs> This is one, a couple of these are ones that I made. I just, you know, I happen to capture the right screen capture during this thing. And, oh, look at, look at how romantic Bobby Lashley and a Braun Strowman look. My favorite, actually subtle thing about this meme is the guys in the background. This guy looking way too happy about it. This neck beard and a kind of pointing to the action. Wrestling is gay. Next one. Uh, this isn't one of my memes. This is one I've had in, in my thing for a long time, ever since Taz attacked Cody when he brought up Hook. So this is before Hook was ever on television. Um, but then for a while, people tried to get these memes going. A variation on the Captain America one where like a joke is delivered and then a fight is pulled apart because the punchline is so awful. Um, I thought it was funny that someone tried to do it with the Taz Cody meme. Pharaoh, who is the dog of Cody Rhodes, walked in on sand walked on sandpaper the other day. And then Taz goes, What? And then Cody goes, he said it was rough, rough. And then Taz chokes him out. <laughs> Fucking love it. So dumb. Um, uh, let's see what else we got here. Ah, uh, this was my favorite meme and clearly the most popular meme that I've put out lately. Then, now, fuck you and on ever. <laughs> With that referee that was recently deposed after um, really multiple instances of sort of questionable behavior. I know some people might want to go like, poor white guy not able to speak up. But I think if you look into his thing at all, you'll see that it's way worse than that. We can pretty much all agree, fuck that guy. And then finally, I've made it, folks. I've been memed. My line, if I did go slumming, I'd have gone to Canton, is now immortalized. And I am honored. Anyway, this has been Stephen Platinum with But Wait, There's More. Have a great day.